Hello, welcome to the second in this series of lessons on particles. We're going to talk about the composition of the nucleus and about the term isotopes. We'll cover what we mean by proton number, sometimes called atomic number. We'll mention elements and how atomic number and the periodic table are related. We'll talk about neutron number. We'll talk about nucleon number, sometimes called mass number. Then we can talk about what isotopes are. And we'll also mention the term nuclides. As we work through, we'll leave a few questions. So when you want to answer them, you can pause the video before listening to my answer. Let's start with proton number, sometimes called atomic number. The two terms mean the same thing. And it's the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. And we'll give it a symbol, capital Z. Here's a simple diagram of an atom, not to scale, just a representation. What do you think the atomic number is? Well, fairly obviously, there are two protons. The proton number, or the atomic number, is two. We can write Z equals two. The number of electrons and neutrons don't matter. Atomic number is quite important. The main thing to remember is the atomic number, or the proton number, identifies the element. It tells you what type of element it is. So, for example, in this diagram, we've got two protons. That makes it helium. Let's go through the first three elements. If Z is 1, if there's only one proton, it's hydrogen, capital H. If we've got two protons, Z equals 2, that makes it helium, capital H, small e. If Z is three protons, it's lithium, capital L, small i. And it's worth remembering those first three elements, their numbers and their symbols. There are lots more elements, of course. We'll talk about those in a moment when we mention the periodic table. Another very useful thing to remember about the proton number or atomic number is it gives you the charge on the nucleus. So the atomic number Z tells you the charge on the nucleus in relative charge units. Hope you know the charge on a proton is plus one unit, charge on a neutron is zero. The total charge on the nucleus in this diagram is plus two. That is the atomic number. If you have a neutral atom, of course, the number of electrons equals number of protons. So the overall charge is zero. And in a neutral atom, the number of electrons is, the e is also equal to the atomic number. But that's only true for a neutral atom. N atoms can gain or lose electrons, so you have to be a bit careful. Best way to think about atomic number is the number of protons. Let's talk about the term element, which I hope you've met before. Very briefly, an element's a substance. And it's made from atoms which have the same number of protons in their nuclei. All the atoms have the same number of protons. Let's give an example. Let's think about carbon. The proton or atomic number of carbon is six. So if it's a carbon atom, it's got six protons. If it's not got six protons, it's a different element. And carbon is an element because in a sample of carbon, the nucleus of every atom has six protons. So an element is made is a substance made from atoms, and all the atoms have the same proton number. Let's talk about the periodic table of the elements, usually just referred to as the periodic table. If you've learned some chemistry, this will be familiar. If you haven't seen this before, well, I'm going to have to ask you to accept it as a way of representing a list of all the elements we know about. What we've got in this version of the periodic table is the symbol for the element and the atomic number. And if we look across the periodic table left to right, the atomic number increases. Let's start and work through briefly. The first thing in the periodic table is hydrogen. It's the simplest element. It's only got one proton in the nucleus. Then we've got helium with two protons in the nucleus. Then we've got lithium with three protons in the nucleus. Then we've got beryllium with four protons in the nucleus, and so on. 
So if you've got access to a periodic table like this, you can look up the number of protons for any element. O is oxygen. If we wanted to know what the atomic number of oxygen is, we read it off. It's at position 8 in the periodic table. So if you want to pause and look through that briefly, you may not know what all the symbols stand for. You can get versions of the periodic table which include the full name of the elements. The important thing to remember is that the numbering is the atomic number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for example, zinc has 30 protons in the nucleus. A neutral atom of zinc has 30 electrons. Here's a little exercise for you. Look at the diagrams. Which element or elements are represented here? Well, I hope it's fairly obvious. The one on the left, there's two protons. Z equals two. That makes it helium. It doesn't matter it's only got one electron. It's lost an electron. It doesn't matter it's only got one neutron. It's helium if it's got two protons. This one, one proton, makes it hydrogen. Let's talk about neutron number. Pretty obviously, it's the number of neutrons in the nucleus. We give it a symbol, capital N. What do you think the neutron number here is? Pretty obviously, 2. And the neutron number doesn't affect what the element is. We could add or take away neutrons, and it's still the same element. If I added a neutron here, it would still be helium. Let's talk about nucleon number, sometimes called mass number. The terms mean the same thing. And the nucleon number is the number of nucleons. That means the number of neutrons and protons in the nucleus. Remember what a nucleon is? It's a general term for a particle in the nucleus. That means a neutron or a proton. We give it the symbol capital A. What do you think the mass number or nucleon number of this is? Fairly obvious, I hope. 4. We could write A equals 4. And the nucleon number, or mass number, is a, a rough guide to the mass of the atom. The, num the mass of electrons is very small compared to the mass of the nucleus. So if we look at the mass of an atom, we can usually ignore the electrons. They're so light. We look at the neutrons and protons. The mass of a neutron is about the same as the mass of a proton. So if I have another atom with eight nucleons, it would be about twice as heavy as this one. The mass is roughly proportional to the number of nucleons. Double the number of nucleons, you will double the mass of the atom. Now that's not exactly true, but it's a rough guide. When you learn some nuclear physics, you'll find why it's not exactly true. Here's an exercise now for you to try. What I want you to do is pause the video, read this through for yourself and try and answer it. So pause now. Let's go through it. I hope it's pretty obvious that if you add the number of protons to the number of neutrons, you'll get the number of nucleons. So A is Z plus N. So equation C is clearly true. And if C is true, A and B can't be. We can rearrange equation C to give the number of neutrons. That gives us equation D. Should be fairly obvious anyway. The number of neutrons is number of nucleons minus number of protons. And if D is true, E and F can't be true. So I hope you got that. Let's talk about the term isotopes now. Let's look at three different atoms. Can you tell me what element or elements these are? Well, I hope you realize they're all helium, because they've all got two protons. doesn't matter how many electrons or neutrons are present. They've all got two protons. And we say these are atoms of three different isotopes of helium. They're all helium, but they're different versions of helium because they've got different numbers of neutrons. And we, we, we use the terminology, terminology isotopes to indicate that. Let me give you an explanation of what an isotope is. 
isotopes of an element are different forms of the same element so they've got the same number of protons but they've got different numbers of neutrons in the nuclei same number of protons but different number of neutrons in the nuclei that's what we mean by isotopes of an element so these are all isotopes of helium they are three different isotopes of helium let's talk about how we can represent an isotope to represent a particular isotope we include the nucleon number or mass number along with the symbol. I'll do the first one for you. Helium 3 is written like that. How do I construct the symbol? Well I know it's helium because it's two protons and I count the number of nucleons the mass number is 3. I can write HE-3 or some people prefer to put the mass number on the top left. What are the symbols for the other two? You may want to pause and think about that for the moment. Let's tell you what they are. Helium 4 can be written like that. Helium 5 can be written like that. So we can have different isotopes of the same element. Let's talk a little bit more about isotopes. Some isotopes are stable. That means the nuclei don't change naturally. Helium 3 and helium 4 are stable isotopes of helium. If I give you a sample of helium, come back in a week's time, or I should say a sample of helium 4 and give and come back in a week's time it's still helium 4 the nuclei haven't changed they're stable but some isotopes are unstable and that means their nuclei naturally change to become more stable and they're called radioactive isotopes or radio radioisotopes helium 5 is an example of this Helium-5 is actually extremely unstable. It's very difficult to produce in the first place. You might find it inside a star on a fusion reaction, but it doesn't last very long because it's so unstable. It decays, that means it changes in a fraction of a second. It actually throws out a neutron uh, that leaves a helium-4 nucleus behind, which is stable. Some isotopes don't exist at all. For example, helium-11 simply can't exist. You can't take two protons and nine neutrons and get them to stay together. So some isotopes don't even exist at all. Let's give you a quick definition of isotopes, something that comes up in exams. Here's one version, one possible definition. An isotope is a form of an element with a specific number of neutrons. And we're going to add that different isotopes of the same element have the same proton number but different neutron numbers and that's the point to bring out in green in an exam if you're asked to explain or state what an isotope is different isotopes of the same element have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons in their nuclei there's different ways to say it the term nuclide is something you may come across. I'll just tell you what it is because it confuses people. And a nuclide is simply a term meaning a specific isotope of an element, a particular isotope. So, for example, hydrogen 2 is a nuclide, helium 3 is a nuclide, helium 4 is a nuclide. nuclide. So, these three are three different nuclides. You find the word nuclide and isotope are often used interchangeably but you usually use isotope when you're referring to different isotopes of the same element and you use nuclide when you're talking about one item or different elements and to finish off here's a question for you to try for yourself again I would like you to pause read through and have a go pause now Well, I hope you've had, it, had a go. Let's do the first one. It should be fairly simple. We want the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in nitrogen 15. Well, the number of protons is 7. How do I know? Because it tells you the atomic number or the proton number for nitrogen is 7. The number of protons is 7. It's a neutral atom, so the number of electrons is also 7. And the number of neutrons is going to be the nucleon number 
15 minus the number of protons, which is 7, and that's 8. In question 2, let's work out how many neutrons and protons we had to start with. Well, initially, before the, key, before the collision, in oxygen 17, there were 8 protons. How do I know? Well, it's oxygen, and oxygen always has 8 protons. Z equals 8. How many neutrons? Well, it was a mass number of 17, so the number of neutrons is 17 minus the number of protons. That gives 9 neutrons. After the collision, we've knocked out 2 protons and 2 neutrons. So the number of protons remaining is 8 minus 2. We've only got 6 protons left. The number of neutrons remaining is 9 minus 2, which is 7 neutrons. That means what we're left with is carbon-13. Can you see why? We know the number of protons is 6. From the information we're given, 6 protons, atomic number 6, means carbon. And the total number of neutrons and protons is 6 plus 7. That gives us carbon-13. Hope you got that. OK. That's it. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.